back. And we are going to be speaking right now with Melissa Reed, and she's a therapist at Bliss Counseling. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So we were going to speak about um, grief and, and dealing with grief with kids and family members. It's a really important subject, but we decided to go a different way today. And yeah. we're going to talk about, Melissa's going to get into it. About, about being the attached parent, right? Um, because we are in a world in a day and age where there's this attachment parenting. And I think that as parents, why we thought this topic was really important is because that we're all different parents. And yeah. I think it's because as we were raised by parents, I think that were strict and were, you know, had rules and, respe and expected respect. And I think we went two ways. We either emulated that, we want to be like that, we want to enforce rules, we want to, be we believe in discipline, or we went the other way, and I call mine like the hippy dippy way, which you know. <laughs> she's the hippy dippy. I'm <laughs> and and you you don't want that enforcement of you know discipline, or you want to be calmer. We don't want to raise our voices, right? You know, so we're not the same, and we see that in our marriages. Yeah, so and, and I think too, like some of our goals are to raise our kids through attachment parenting, but we're not always comfortable with what it actually means. So maybe you could get into it a little bit with us about let's, what. Yeah, let's start there with what is being comfortable with attached parent. The parenting, being an we're attached not attached parent. parent. Yeah. Yeah. So, like you were saying, Melissa, when we were being raised, if we weren't being raised with emotional awareness, where our parents were talking about maybe how we felt at the time when we were experiencing discipline or when we were going through difficult periods through our childhood, right? Um, attached parenting and attachment parenting is really about accessing our child's feelings. So we don't necessarily come to that with the language built on the models that we had in parenting from our parents. Mm -hmm. The other place is around strict. Um, you know, there's a spectrum, right? Where strict may have been a conversation or expectations and rules to more of a, you know, hostile or really negative environment. Right. And so when I talk about attached parenting, I talk about, you know, how are we um, comfortable in that parenting in terms of our own emotional well being when we're with our children? Mm -hmm. And how do we discuss and access the language around emotions with our kids when we try to talk to them and access how they're feeling? It's the triggers that we may experience. That we're not even aware of. Right. 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 And, and we were just speaking about that, like what our triggers are. And, and for me, like volume was a big thing. And I, I don't think I am an attachment type parent. And I'm, but at the same time, I'm very close to my kids and like want to have a very close emotional and physical relationship with them. But definitely I have triggers from not being raised in an environment that was very supportive, right? right. So, yeah, like, I think that we also kind of go to this place where we, you know, we start off getting to our child's level and it's okay, Johnny, like, what are you feeling hungry? Your goal is to be peaceful. Yeah, you're at peace. <laughs> and then, you know, Johnny takes it two steps too far and you're like, now Johnny's not respecting me. Now, we're, you know, now we're getting serious, right? And now what did that trigger in me? Because I don't know how to deal with that anywhere past that point. Right? And, and I think that's where I think as parents we struggle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do you do in those situations? Well, you know, that piece of respect that Johnny's not respecting me, where did that come from? And what we look at is the early models that we had as well. Where did that message of respect being a part of the relationship between child and parent come from? Yeah. And how was that addressed in our own childhood? Mm -hmm. So if respect was something that was dealt with hostility or aggression, maybe there was spanking because again, we're talking potentially about the 70s and 80s. Um, it was very different. Yeah. It was a very yeah. different model of parenting. Yes. Absolutely. So what we experience when our child starts to reenact behaviors that we ourselves got punished for. It's like alarm bells. That's right. We start experiencing the same emotions that we had as that child, which is this is not safe. Maybe this is going to create danger. Maybe I'm experiencing fear. And so then I parent from that feeling rather than what we would want to see in an attached parent, which is that self-soothing, I'm okay, I am safe, yeah. this is not a threat, I'd like to explain to my child what my expectations are right now. So do you work with parents in order to help them control those feelings that they're getting through like the, while they're parenting and while those triggers are coming up? Absolutely. So we talk about first identifying it because yeah. again, you know, what that parent might say is, well, it made me angry. Mm -hmm. And what I would, you know, want to do with that parent is, is kind of pull back the layers and say, okay, is it just angry? What's maybe behind that? And maybe we find that there is fear or confusion mm -hmm. or frustration or disappointment. And we'd want to address those feelings, just like we're doing with our children, talking about what it is that they're feeling so that we yeah. can have a conversation. We're doing that with that parent so that they can say, okay, this is what it is. This is where it's come from and self-soothe. Right, because we're expecting our children to act appropriately in certain situ situations that trigger them. But 
are we acting appropriately in the situations that are triggering us, right? Because we're, we're all about setting the right example, but then when you really analyze yourself as a parent, yeah. like, are you reacting appropriately, right? Well, and then what happens is then we become really critical of ourselves, yeah. right? Yeah. And that highly critical <laughs> person doesn't feel good about themselves. We go back into parenting maybe feeling lesser than or not good enough, and then probably enact a similar... Um, behavior that we don't feel good about and it becomes very cyclical. Mm -hmm. We can't seem to get out from under that criticized parent. Mm -hmm. You know, and I really emphasize to people, let's try and be good enough. Mm -hmm. Not perfect, not excellent. Our children are little people too and they are part of the, the dynamic, yes. um, part of the equation. That's right? what I was going to ask you, like, do you have some tips or some co coping mechanisms that you could going to put out there to parents who might be struggling? Yeah, because I think it's important here that there's probably some parents at home who are like, uh, yeah, it's nice, it's all fluffy, mm -hmm. but you know what? No, I want respect. I, my child needs to be disciplined, and this doesn't work for me. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but I'm sure inside, maybe they still want to, they, maybe they don't want to be yelling, or maybe they don't, you know, I hear that all the time. I don't want to be yelling at you, right? but what else do I do, right? Like so you get to the point where you feel like it's just not working and you're not being heard. Right. Yeah, so part of that is that judgment and that shame that we experience as parents around what we want or think we should have versus who we believe we are in the parenting relationship. You know, who are we talking to about that? Are we connecting with our partner and talking about who we believe we are in the parenting relationship so that we can have someone who sees us too to help realize that it's not as bad as we might see it or think that it is? Yeah. Uh, or that we believe we are or think that we are? You know, do we have connections outside of our family home? We really talk about, and culturally we talk about self-care, and it's really, you know, for parents in the home, we really try to emphasize, get out of that relationship too. That's a, that is a job, yes. <laughs> and you get other, you know, other people have a break from their job, so give yourself a break. Mm, Connect right, with yeah. friends, yes. you know, do something for you. Or when your partner comes home from work, go to the gym for an hour, go get Absolutely. a coffee, like go walk around the block, you really need to do that. Let your husband send you grocery shopping. Yeah. We were just talking about that. Grocery shopping, like, there's a break. <laughs> when did grocery shopping become your break? <laughs> it, is, it really is sometimes, it's, but it's just getting into a space where you don't hear kids yelling, screaming behind you, where like, you don't have to speak to anybody, you don't have to hear your own voice, for a little bit because I don't know but you, I get sick of my own voice yeah. sometimes so I, I get sick of your voice you too. too but so yeah you need that space but it helps you to evaluate is this really about respect right. you know and and if it is what is respect to me so the other piece is mm -hmm. You know, are we explaining respect mm. based on our child's right. development? Because you age? said it, six, a six year old doesn't understand the word respect, but I use it all the time and we talk yeah. about it a lot. Right. right. Yeah. So it's how can we, you know, Ross Green is a, a parenting uh, guru, I would say, who has many books published. And one of the things he talks about is when our children aren't behaving in a way that we would like them to, it's because we haven't taught them the skill that they need to do it. Mm. So really putting the, the position back on the parents, yeah. because again, we were raised that it was us that needed to figure it out. The children needed to figure it out. Ross Green says the parents need to help the child build the skill. Yes. Right. So what? how can I help them to understand what respect is? Right. What does it mean? And and you guys were making examples of the classroom. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely, the classroom mm -hmm. has you guidelines and, yeah. and um, expectations. And that can be, you know, broken down into maybe this is what respect looks like. I, I think you need to touch on one thing here. You had said we're worried about our children at home because they're not listening at home. And you said to look outside of, of how home. are they behaving outside the home? Right. So right? Attach, attachment parenting and attached parenting is really about being the foundation for our children, being the place where they test out behaviors. Test I like that. Yeah. Need to hear I know. That. Yes. Let them test it at yeah, home. That's and right. when you hear they're behaving well in school or out then, in the world, then you know you're doing something yes. right. Right. Well, and our children know that. <laughs> there are expectations in the classroom that maybe they can't, you know, yell out or get up or feel uncomfortable or express their emotions because again, they have a little societal expectation that's built into the classroom. So we want them to come home and that may mean the behaviors come out because yeah. they've held it together all day or maybe yes. the emotions come out because they can express them with us. They know they're safe. That's a good point. They held it all day because we had our first day of school yesterday and we had a lot of behavior last night. And you know what? It was. I think it, because someone did so well all day, it came out in the evening, and that like makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And then you can just end the night with a glass of wine, and it's good. <laughs> thank you so much, Melissa, for speaking yeah, with us. Thank you. And like I had said, we were going to speak about grief and dealing with grief within our families and with our kids. And we will be having Melissa back to talk about that important subject as well. But thank yeah. you so much for being here. Thank, thank you. you again. All right. And thank you so much. Make sure you tune in next week on Vanessa and Melissa, and we will see you then. Bye. Bye.